Welcome back to Walls in Our Minds. This is Kerry Dodd. Uh, Red, are you on with us? I'm, I'm hoping Red hasn't dropped off. I have not dropped off. That's great. I am uh, with you. I'm glad you're here. We were concerned we couldn't see you on the switchboard, and I really want you on here to be able to visit with Mr. Warren Snarps. We're going to be talking about the uh, photon genius revolution here, and um, this is something, Red, I think you're going to be really excited about, and, and I, I, I'm hoping that uh, Warren's going to speak directly to you. Warren Starnes is uh, with the Skilling Institute, and um, I got to experience his photon G today. And uh, Warren, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, former legal and financial consultant for 25 years till cancer retired me. And uh, in my quest for uh, solutions, uh, you know, I've explored around the world, everywhere from China to Russia, and doctors and healers all over the place. And, um, you know, Ed Skilling's technology was the most viable in the electromedicine field. And, you know, I had was familiar with Rife and a bunch of the others before because I had recommended that for clients, you know, their wives would get breast cancer or they did get prostate involvement or whatever. So I'd already already explored alternatives for a lot of years, but never really thought it would be for myself because I was nicknamed the health nut. You know, my nickname used to be Mr. Health. So I was the last one to ever be expected to come down with something like cancer. So it just proves no matter what you think, we're in a cause and effect world. You get insult the body enough, get enough toxic exposure, chemical exposure, you know, accidents, injuries, tired enough, long enough, sick enough, long, often enough. You know, these things can uh, take over. I, I have a little slogan that I say, the bugs rule. And they eventually do. So it's a kind of a contest of the good ones against the bad ones. And, you know, we're just now finding out more about it because, you know, in the past, nobody wanted to talk about something bad like cancer. I remember sitting around in conversations with adults when I was a kid, and if some bad thing came up, like somebody talked about cancer or MS or something, some old boy would just say, ah, let's just don't talk about it. So we as kids kind of got the impression that, you know, if you don't talk about it, you might not get it. Well, the Europeans uh, refer to this kind of mentality we have in our health care system as the ostrich mentality. You know, if you stick your head in the sand and don't think or talk about it, you know, maybe maybe it will just roll by you, but it really just steamrolls all of us. So I've had an interesting experience for the last 14 years being a legal and financial consultant to Ed Skilling. Once I found out his technology worked and he was credited for reinventing Rife technology in 1959 and with his background as 17 years senior electronics design engineer for General Dynamics, number one design electronics engineer in the world at the time, category of Tesla or Marconi, you know, I, uh, I developed a respect for him pretty quick and uh, represented him legally and financially, and he made me the director of his institute, and I've been working with him for 14 years. You know, you told a story about Dr. and uh, how this really came into, into being. That was really interesting. I think our listeners would enjoy that. Well, it's really interesting because it's just some one of these live things that happens. You know, I... I was blown away by the genius of Ed Skilling, like everyone is. You know, he's got a documented history as long as your leg, longer than anybody, right, for any of the rest of them. He's the only really full-blown military background design guidance systems for missiles. He was the number one electronics engineer for General Dynamics for 17 years. He supervised over a 1,000 of the brightest electronics engineers in the world at the time. So, you know, um, I'm in his lab, and I'm about four years into him teaching me how all this works, and he always put phone calls on speakerphone, which was, you know, he was a free, open spirit, honest guy. And I always said, you know, he didn't have time to think of anything bad. He was too busy doing electronics 14, 18 hours a day. And he put every every one of these calls on speakerphone, and another one came in. I was working on a circuitry, and 
a, a lady doctor that started talking to him, and they're in this conversation about old times and who they knew and friends. And in the conversation, he says, you still got that big box. And he referred to it in some nickname. And she said, why, yes, I still had it. And he said, well, how's it working for you? And she said, well, I'm still betting a 1000 Well, you know, I'm being in the legal and financial world, and, you know, you don't, you, you don't, well, you under-promise and over-deliver, the opposite of what people do in business today, which is over-promise and under-deliver. So, you, you know, you just don't make wild claims or exaggerations or even get close to it. And so after this conversation, I said, what, what were we all talking about? Well, it was a special instrument I made for her and one of her patients 20 years ago. I said, so she's still using it? Still, Oh, yeah. I said, well, what's this bat in a thousand? He said, well, she's been using it on cancer patients for 20 years. She changed every one of them. I said, well, why did you make it to begin with? He said, well, it was a rare form of cancer one of her patients had. It was a young lady in her early 20s. She had tumors over every square inch of her body, top of her head, bottom of her feet, extremely painful, couldn't even hardly wear clothes, couldn't go anywhere, and tremendous pain constantly, and they, it was extremely rare. They, no one knew what to do anything about it. You can't just, like, cut every. Well, the only way to cut all that out is just put her in a body bag. So, you know, it was just not practical in the medical terms to even try to do anything. So he made this special instrument. I said, well, what was it? He said, well, it was a special combination of noble gas technology, which has been around for over 100 years, and he specialized in it. He had the electronics genius to be able to measure not just frequencies, but harmonics, which is everything going on between, above, and below a frequency. And he proved that it wasn't frequencies in the Rife and, and Lakowski and Abrams and other guys' technologies that did magic in the body, the body's more complex than that. It's not as simple as a number on a meter. And so he said, I, I have developed this combination of gases that put out the richest array of electron harmonics. I said, really? And I said, well, how, what did you do? He said, I've made this combination of noble gases, krypton, xenon, neon, argon, all the inert gases, and I dialed in for the richest explosion and transmission radiation of electrons, and he had about 14 feet of this noble gas tube technology in this box, and so he made it for this lady, for this specific patient. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, she used it. Her boyfriend rigged it up so he'd go up and down over her bed. Six weeks later, she's out and riding her bicycle. Well, you know, I just immediately jumped to what my, you know, bent was, which is being a doubting Thomas and explore all angles. And I said, well, you know, the only thing I know about cancer is it either goes somewhere else or comes back. I said, what happened to her? He said, well, a couple of years later, it started coming back. She went back to this doctor, got this box, got this spirit gas, noble gas technology on her, and went away again and never came back. And she's been using all cancer patients for 20 years. And like she said, and I said, Ed, how come we're not making that? He said, well, we're in a better direction. You know, the photon genie has this circuitry that regenerates, reflows nerve paths. So it works on things not just like cancer, a pathogen. It reflows in our paths. It works on things neurological like dementia, ADD, ADHD, autism. It's any anything involving a direct neurological component. And and I agreed with him. I said, but man, you know, we get these calls from these people that are just it's it's bottom of the night inning, and they're they got the hand on the light switch. These, these people are just about gone. You know, we need any kind of extra power we can get to help these people. He said, you know, you're right. And he said, we could go back and do that again. I said, well, let's do it. And he said, all right, I'll tell you how you go do it. So I made a prototype box, and the only experiment I got to do with it was on my ex-wife, who in this period of time developed a squamous cell melanoma skin cancer that can no one really survives. And... Long story short, my boys rigged this box of noble gas technology up in her bedroom on a couple of crates. One of my sons loaned her his creepy that he got under his car to work on his car. 
and I even tried to do, have a little sense of humor, and I said, listen, you're getting so good at sliding underneath this thing, she's done it two or three times a day or a night before she went to bed and sleeping with the photon genie, regenerating her and everything. I said, you're getting so good going underneath this thing, and why don't you change oil on my car or something? So she she didn't have a good sense of humor that she was pretty pretty fried. But, uh, you know, they gave her about 60 days to live in 2003. She was disabled. She couldn't work. You know, they were going to, she had this mole on her shoulder, so they were going to cut her shoulder off and cut a chunk of her thigh off to fill in her shoulder and then radiate her. Now, that's the kind of, that's the kind of plan that they come up with when, when you're sick and about to die. They're just going to kill you in multiple ways in addition to that and in the name of trying to save you, which is just a bad joke. I said, listen, you, you could die from either one of these surgeries. And by the way, our two sons, all they're going to see is you limping and gimping around, radiated, on drugs, slobbering, screaming in pain, or slobbering like a vegetable the last days of your life. Now, what kind of picture is that for them to remember? And I finally got through to her, and so she did this. It worked, of course, like it did for this doctor for all these years. And that box had about 18. The original box had about 14 feet of noble gas technology, the spirit gas, and a special kind of generation to fire it and transmit it. And the box I made had 18 feet. And the Photon Genius that we just released in December of nine has 150 feet of this noble gas technology. And we combined infrared, which has been documented for hundreds of years and recognized by medical doctors for decades. And it, you know, just infrared alone uh, changes over 1,800 diseases. The problem is if you go to do the infrared therapy, you're in some wooden box or looking at some goofy light, and that's not much of a therapy to, you know, try to, save your life from terminal cancer. So this this photon genius is a showstopper. I mean, you, you actually can just walk up on it and see it and get the message intuitively, instinctively. Your subconscious gets this loud and clear. It only accepts truth. And when you come in the presence of this sucker, you, you, you just walk away convinced on the inside it takes a lot longer for us to consciously go for anything new because we've been, you know, in America too long. And the world is, uh, you know, all about new and, and, you know, be careful and are you sure and all that kind of stuff. Well, listen, man, you know, all it takes is stand in this thing for 30 minutes. By the way, when you fire this baby up and you stand in it, you can get not only.